Hello legends and super legends. Welcome to Valor Harmony. Today I'm doing a special video. Um, the title says revisit is about revisiting your fit, but the underlying theme is that uh, people always surprise me in good ways. <laughs> I'll explain it this way. In other words, uh, I have a very positive outlook when it comes to people in general. You know, in some of the videos, even the group ride, you may have heard me mention that most people are decent and you shouldn't let the few people that misbehave put a sour taste in your mouth. Uh, my, my outlook on life is that most people are good, okay? Most people are decent. And uh, I always give people uh, the, uh, an open mind. And that has served me really well. And what I'm trying to get at is people continue to surprise me every day. As long as I've been on this planet. I was blown away this week by a gentleman, one of our legends here. I have not met personally, but he bought the kit earlier, I think, last year sometime when the kid came out he's got the gloves he lives in the dallas area and uh, his joe is his name is joe nanga i hope i got that right joe joe actually sent me a video where the name is being pronounced by this lady you know doing something in the kitchen and so i practice um i will put his name here when i do this in production so you can see that joe works in internet security i don't have the exact thing and what had happened is Joe had contacted me mentioning that the website veloharmony.com was not secure it was not encrypted I had not invested in moving the site to SSL Joe and someone else had mentioned one person wanted to buy something and was concerned and then I told him well the payment is off-site with PayPal so then he went ahead and processed it but still it just makes sense with all the hacking and stuff going on anyway Joe had mentioned that to me and he had told me about how to get the security for the site there's a place you can get a free one I had done additional research it's just time constrained I hadn't really pull the trigger on it and then this week I get an email from Joe it was actually today is Wednesday it was yesterday Tuesday and Joe says hey you know I think that it would be better if you just use your hosting company have them install this certificate it's a lot easier if you do it that way because they put it in the right place and so forth we basically got it done yesterday in one day I mean I had to get online with my guys that host and you know after I tested things and it was not really working great they had to put some plugins and other things that they didn't do but basically what blew me away was that Joe did not only suggest that I encrypt the site Joe actually donated the cost of encrypting the site and I was very very surprised um, you know he didn't need he didn't have to do that the suggestion was plenty enough but the fact that he chose to do that just blew me away and what he told me on the phone was you've helped this the, the channel has helped me so much in my cycling and it was like he wanted to give back and you, you guys know uh, there's a lot of information on this channel that other channels don't have and so a lot of people sell this information that I've chosen to put here as detailed as I do these videos and you know it I guess it's karma in a way whatever you may believe in you know you give and you will receive so in a way I'm giving to you guys so that you don't go through all the headaches we went through when we were coming up in cycling and here it is I'm receiving something from someone to help me encrypt the website that I use for this channel because the website serves not only for the shop but I will do I do additional blogs sometimes that have more detail in there and there are other things I will do with the website especially now that it's encrypted I want to put some European races just the main highlights of the big races with narration I've been doing that last year and I want to keep doing that on on the website because YouTube has an issue with copyright that they, they're really inconsistent in enforcing and so 
I tried to do fair use stuff that falls under fair use, but they just pull the stuff and you got to prove that you're doing it right. So you're guilty until you're proven innocent. Been there, done that with that. So it was just easier to do with this. But anyway, uh, I don't want to get too much on that side. So thank you, Joe Nanga, for your contribution to the channel. It means a lot. And because of his contribution today, I solicited yesterday from him what did you find that worked on this channel what helped you just give me a so he sent an email telling me what helped him what he'd like to see and so forth so i picked one of the topics that he'd like to see and he talked about revisiting your fit and the reason i jumped on that is there is a tendency if you get your fit and you think is decent that you're done the reason i call it dynamic is that things change you might get a different shoe or you might have a crash or you know something happened like joe joe fell he hit a there was a crack in the road or something that caught his front wheel and he fell he said he rolled and so he's got a little bit of road rash but he had to replace his saddle and replace his shoes whenever you're doing stuff like that if you stay with the same brand and you've taken your measurements it's good you can do the measurements but still think about it this way they're manufacturing these saddles so regardless of how well you measure that one saddle that you may have replaced it with even though it's the same brand maybe there was an off there the factory that day and it may be slightly off compared to the one you had before so don't just go by measurement go by your feel remember the video I made fit is what you feel you can put the saddle in there measure it if it doesn't feel right you still got a tweak so Revisiting your fit starts with, first of all, making sure the saddle height is spot on, meaning when you measure that you're looking across the other side of the saddle, not the one closest to you. Remeasure that and make sure you set your fore aft. After you've confirmed that by feel, do not neglect your cleats, critical. If your cleats are not right, your foot will never be happy in the shoe. The assumption is, like I've always said, the shoe, the shape of the last. The last is the bottom of the shoe. I'm just using this as an example. The shape. You can see, I, I picked Giro shoes because this is what comes with the shoe. This is not special. It just comes in all the, that's what I use. It suits my foot. I don't have much of an arch. I have what they call flat feet. So you need to get a brand that suits your foot or you need to get a custom footbed so that your foot is anchored. When I wear my shoes, they fit this last, which is the bottom of the shoe. I took that out just for demonstration purposes. So if you're riding down the road, I'm going to probably do it this way. And you're finding that your foot is not anchored, like in the arch is not meeting the arch. Your foot just feels like it wants to be somewhere else in the shoe. Revisit the cleat settings. If your foot feels like, I want to be up here, but I'm back here. What that says is, where your foot likes is in front. That means the shoe needs to come back. For the shoe to come back, the cleat must go forward. It's always the opposite of what you want to do with the shoe and vice versa. If your foot is saying, I want to be back here and it's here. And so you're riding and you're moving your foot back or you're twisting it to the side or whatever. That says that you need to move that thing up. If you're twisting to the side, that says you need to look at the lateral adjustment of your cleat. Make sure your shoe does not touch your pedal, your crank arm. You should, there should be no rubbing. I see that a lot. See a lot of dirty shoes when I'm out riding. They should not be touching. If your shoe is touching the crank arm, move the cleat towards the crank arm because that will move the shoe away. Move the cleat, you know, because everything else being equal, you're happy with everything but your foot, the, the, the inside of your shoe rubbing on the crank arm. Make sure you maintain the same position of the cleat and all you want to do is shift it to the inside so that the shoe can move to the outside. If you look at what I'm doing here, I'm gonna turn it like this. It will probably be easier for you to see and come closer to the camera. So like this, this is touching, if this is touching your crank arm, move this up here, let me hold it this way. By you moving the cleat this way, the shoe now moves that way. 
Because all you're going to be doing is moving it to the inside. You, you move it opposite the direction you want the shoe to go. Okay? The reason I'm stressing those things, those are the main areas of discomfort because as long as your foot is, or your feet that are not happy, you get pulled away from your sweet spot that you took the time to find with your saddle height and your fore aft. Your foot should be relaxed. And another thing, it will cause numbness when your foot is not happy. It's not sitting where it wants to, where it needs to be, meaning the arch of your foot is not on this perfect part that, that the arch should be aligned with. Your foot must make the shoe. When you buy shoes, do not hedge. In other words, I wear an 11 in US, which is 45 European. You can't just go by that. It happens that Giro is consistent in that their 45 equates to an 11 US. CD and some of the other guys, they get a little crazy. With CD, you might need a 45.5. You gotta look at the chart, the sizing chart for the shoe that you're using and make sure you're getting an 11. That's why it helps to get it at a bike shop the first time. And once you've identified the brand and the size, then you can start getting them online. I can buy Giro shoes sight on scene because I only use Giro shoes. It doesn't mean it's the only shoe that can work for me. Shimano will work for me too. They'll work fine. I just like the Giro shoes because I was able to get really good deals and they just work for my foot. I used to wear CD in the past. I've used Shimano. Shimano and Giro uh, caters to people with flat feet. Like me, I don't have a, a pronounced arch. CD has a tendency to favor people that have a lot of arch. And then you have to get a foot bed so your foot can be comfortable in there. If your foot is not resting on the inside of the shoe with no gaps and everything, you will have problems with numbness and different things. You will be putting pressure on the wrong side area of your foot. Uh, there was a gentleman that had come to the channel and he got a little upset because he asked about his question was a bit contentious the way he worded it he said why are you still wearing road cleats he watched one of the group rides and it just came over like why not i mean my thing is everybody that rides a road bike pretty much all the pros whoever are wearing road cleats so why would you ask why am i wearing road cleats if i were wearing mountain bike cleats that question would be valid and the way it was worded with the tone that was on there. Because I'm doing what's normal. It's kind of like you saying, why are you brushing your teeth? You know, everybody brushes their teeth, I, I presume. You know, in some countries they chew on stick or they do different things. There's a lot of stuff. But I'm doing what's normal and you're acting as if to say I'm doing something unusual. So I replied and told him the right tool for the job. I'm paraphrasing. He didn't like that. He said it was a flippant answer or whatever. And I told him, I said, well, your question already said you had like a pre predisposed position. And he came back and made additional comments and this and that. And I, I don't, I didn't take it personal or anything because his second response was a better question than the first. So I went ahead and answered the second, you know, and then he came back and said, oh, forget I asked the question and yada, yada, yada. You know, it was a drama, but you know, we went through. And the reason I'm mentioning that is this cleat is wide. I did not pick Shimano cleat for any other reason other than the fact that it got rid of my hot feet I used to have when I, when I would race with Look and other cleats. We had a team that was affiliated with a bike shop and so you got certain things free. Well, I spent my own money to ride Shimano cleats. At the time, I rode Shimano shoes as well because they fit my foot similar to Giro and I used their cleats because it was wider. It just worked. So when I told him the right tool for the job, that's what I meant. If something works for you, why change it just because something else comes along? My uh, forage into look was after I, I got through competing, I was getting a bike in Austin at one of the shops and the guy just put the look pedals on there and I thought nothing of it. But then when I started to use it, the, it was just so small. It's smaller than this. If you took a look cleat and you put it next to this, it dwarfs it. Okay. Now, 
it's not like a third of the size or whatever, but it's small enough to where it was making the area of the ball of my foot that that cleat was on when I, when I would use look, it just made everything go numb. With Shimano cleats, it's spread out over a wider area. I don't feel anything. I can ride for hours, no problems with my feet. So when he asked that question, it was so unusual in that everybody's wearing road cleats. Why would you ask me why am I wearing road cleats? Like I'm doing something unusual, you know? So he had everything all reversed because apparently he had a bad experience with road cleats and whatever. So that's supposed to be the norm. Don't change things because of one person it changes because of you. There's nothing wrong with him riding mountain bike cleats. There's a guy we ride with, Alan. He, he uses mountain bike cleats. He likes the, the, the feel. He likes the shoes that come along. He can walk. Whatever your reason is, stay with it. I've always used road cleats. I like the Shimano cleat because I can walk in these. You see those pads? They're easy to walk in with those on there. I don't do a whole lot of walking other than getting down, maybe using a restroom or going to, to refill my bottles or whatever. So I want something that functions when I'm on the bike. Okay? That's what matters. So even if this was crappy to walk in, I'm not hiking in these. I'm riding the bike. So the few uh, moments that I have to walk in them, even if, it's, if it were crappy, I would, I would accept that. That's what I meant. So... What I'm trying, I, I went off on a little bit of a tangent, but what I'm trying to get at is make sure that when it comes to your foot, don't only look at the shoe as to how it fits your foot. Look at what other problems may be caused by your retention system. Okay. If you're using the SPD, those small little mountain bike stuff, my wife has them on her shoe. She could, she can never get comfortable whenever she rides. Her foot gets numb. They're real tiny. They're small. Then they have the one that Alan has, which is slightly bigger, but not quite as wide as this. So if you're having numb feet, that's something to revisit and start thinking about, okay, why am I having numb feet? Are my feet made it with the shoe perfectly? And if that's the case, then there may be a retention system just focus on a small area and cause. So you're not really dissipating the force when you put it down the pedal. You, you know, you, you're doing thousands of RPMs. You need a wide. The ball of your foot is is wide. So why just use the middle? You want a pedal that will spread out. It's one of the reasons why, although I have a power meter on the radar, I, I can't do vector three and all of that because they use that like a look size cleat. I'm not changing these because I've been there, done that with look size cleats. They just create numbness in the middle of my foot where they sit. They're too small. I like the wide platform, you know, so revisit how you sit on the bike saddle. Revisit fore aft saddle fore aft. Revisit your feet. Your sit bones should be, let me get a, a, a saddle here. Okay. Your sit bones. If you, I'm gonna do it this way. First off, this is something I have everybody do when they come to the studio. Right under here, if you put your hand right here, you cup your gluteus maximus. There is a bone where your middle finger, you can feel that bone. That's what you sit on. Okay, that bone under there. There are two of them. Those bones is the issue of pubic rumbus. They are loosely called sit bones, but that's not what their name is. That should be seated, should be placed. Let me do it sideways. You need to sit right here. That's in the saddle. That's where those bones should be. It's not your gluteus maximus. The bone should be about here. So it's a two centimeter area right there. By you sitting on that area effectively, when you pedal, you press those bones on that area. That's your fulcrum. That's your, that's your anchoring point. And that enables you to unload your arms, press those bones, and your legs are free to pedal. If you're not seated there and the saddle's too high, it's not in the right spot, you won't want to press down on it. Those are the things you need to revisit. Really critical. Um, fit is not easy. 
fit uh, takes a lot of experience. It takes a lot of patience. Many riders spend a period of time before they perfect their fit. So don't expect to do it overnight. You just need to know what to look for. And I think that's the reason why Jordan Nanga suggested that, you know, how do you revisit your fit? It was one of the things, and I know this is something that affects everybody, because when I was racing, I was always tweaking stuff. That's what got me into bike fit, because my coach didn't know anything about bike fit. He was just, he was good at getting me ready to compete. So I had to read books and do other things and learn from other, other masters. There was a guy named Philip that worked at a bike shop in the west side of Houston, an old Asian guy, almost like a, that you see out of the, 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 the Chinese uh, uh, Shaolin movies. You know, he spoke very cryptically, so you had to listen actively because he would say something and it had a lot of misdirection. So you could get, to, to get he, he had a lot of knowledge. I learned a lot from him, working on bikes, whatever. I always hung around the bike shop on the, when I had time. I was in college at the time. So since you're coming and you're watching a video or whatever, let your body be your Master, meaning let your body tell you. Don't ignore any discomfort. You should not be uncomfortable. A little bit of numbness in the hand, something's causing it. You're trying to unload something. You know, if you've gone through everything and checked your, so for your handlebar now, after you've gotten all of this tweaked and everything, as far as the bars, very straightforward. You find this bone, measure to the middle finger, the first crease on the back of the middle finger. That's what wraps the bars. That's what you measure to. I got a video for that, we'll put the link here. You measure to that and take that measurement, that's your full reach. You wanna measure the top tube on the bike. If it's slanted, measure in a straight line from the center of the seat post. The center of the seat post, you know, the video I'm gonna put that has all of that in there. From the center of the seat post, don't worry about the slope, do not measure along the slope. Measure a straight line, Add the difference to get your length of your stem. So if this is 72 and your seat, your bike is 60, you buy a 12 centimeter stem. 99% of the time you'll be right there. Okay, those are the things you can just verify and re-verify if there's something off. Any discomfort says something's off. And then once you're really happy, I will put the link to the other video, measure how you measure everything on your bike so you can document it now. And if you ever need another bike, you've got your settings. And your settings as far as the saddle is based on the brand that you use. If you buy a different saddle, the setback will change because they're all different. Keep that in mind. That's why I have the same brand on all my bikes. Once you find a saddle that works, stick with it. There's no point in change. It doesn't mean you can't ride another saddle if you had to, but that means you would have to find your sweet spot fore aft all over again. Because every saddle has a different length and a different shape, and you sit differently on it than versus another brand. So your setback won't be the same. Those of you who need help with fit, a lot of people come down here to the studio and I fit them within 45 minutes because they just don't want to bother going through the iterations of trial and error. You know, not everybody can watch a video and do that. If you feel that you need help, whether you're local or not, contact us. We have remote fit packages and we also do local fit for those of you in the area by appointment. So the, the link to the website is behind me there on the banner, fellowharmony.com. We just went to... Uh, SSL, so it's HTTPS, but if you use the HTTP address, it will redirect. I'm gonna wrap up there to say, pay attention to your fit when you ride on your easy days. How does everything feel? That's when you really need to be tweaking stuff on your easy rides, those short, easy rides. What are you doing on a trainer? Even on the rollers, for those of you like uh, TS who, who does, uh, uses the rollers, listen to how that saddle feels under you. Are you scooting forward? What are you doing? Are you, because anytime you're doing something else other than pedaling, you, you're affecting your, your performance. So I'm gonna stop there because this subject is so deep that it could go on forever. I don't want this video to be too long. So. Make sure that your bike fits you like a glove. If it doesn't, identify what's causing the problem and deal with it. If you can't deal with it on your own, 
go to veloharmony.com, set up, sign up for one of our packages and we'll, we'll help you take care of that, okay? So no matter what, get your K's in. I wanna thank all of you guys, Joe, all the, the other sponsors of the channel, all you super legends. It's great to have you guys support the channel. It, it will help me devote more time to the content on here. I wanna thank you so much, guys and girls. Be safe when you're out there.